Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. This time we are going to go over an Arnold node that we really haven't talked about too much, which is the AI facing ratio. So let me demonstrate to you what it does. So here is my character and I call her Erica because I have no creativity. And as you can see, she's already textured and she's got a very basic physical sky. And if I want to make her look like um, she has an outline, I can turn on tune shading. But I wanted to demonstrate to you what exactly AI facing ratio does. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and just hide her for now. Ah. Control H and let's just bring up a regular everyday sphere. So if I render this, basics here. So what I want to do is assign a new Arnold shader to it. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you what it does. Okay, so we just have a re regular basic shader and I'm going to render it at 100% weight of color. Oops, maybe just gray it out a little bit. And under color, I'm going to click on out here on the output. I'm going to go to Arnold and just type in facing. And you're going to notice that right away we have AI facing ratio. Click on that and our little sphere disappears. So if you're a little, so if you're worried, click on this guy right here, which is going to show you the outline and let's render what we have. So what you'll notice is that the color now has a light at the center. And as it gets further away from the camera, it starts to darken. So let's click on this, go to our AI standard surface, go to our color, click on the output and let's play around. To really see the effect, I'm going to click on this uh, render on selected. Okay, so here we have, and if I invert this, you're going to notice that it's dark in the center and then it kind of spreads out. Let's mess around with this a little bit. Uh, we can take this bias and start pushing it to the left or the gain more to the left. And you're going to notice that once I get too close, too close to zero, it flips, but we can get a really cool effect where the white outline is on the outside and it's dark on the inside. And if I revolve this, you'll notice that it's always facing the camera. It's kind of creepy this way, but hopefully it gives you an idea. And if I want to reduce it, I can do the bias and just kind of scale it really thin. So now I have a white outline around my object. If I wanted to uh, flip it, I could always increase the bias really. And then if we wanted to kind of soften that edge with the gain. So there's a lot of really fun things we can do with this. Now, why do I have this? Well, I wanted to demonstrate this to you because this is a fun way of kind of creating a little tune shading. So bringing back uh, my character here, shift H, delete the sphere. And I'm going to go to her hyper shade. I got a lot of stuff going on, but if I click on, let's say her body, and I click on this guy, it's going to show me her shader. And what I can do is create an AI mix. So let's go ahead and create an AI mix shader. And we can plug in the out color and place it in here. Now, if I go to my browser, I already have a utility node called the facing shader. So here it is. So utilities, I can just kind of drag that out here. I can go ahead and use this as a, as a mix. So this is going to drive the shader and then I'm going to need something that's going to work with it. So let's go ahead and bring up another AI standard surface. And this one is, let's just make it uh, a blue. Well, let's make it black just for default so we can see it a little bit better. Crank, crank that up. I'm going to, and now that we have two shaders, I can plug it in into shader two. So let's go ahead and relabel this because it's going to be my outline. Again, I'm going to just make sure that uh, I don't want to have too many shaders running around without names because it gets overwhelming very quickly. So what I have now is a mixed shader that's being driven by uh, a black outline or a black shader and the skin shader plus an AI facing ratio. So let's see what we get so far go back to the mix shader and it would help if I actually assign the mix shader to the model. Um, otherwise I can't really see anything at all. So let's turn this off. There she is. So here we have, as you notice, um, thanks to the facing ratio. All right, let's just close all this. I, it's a little too busy. Let's go to texturing and we're going to select her. 
click on this little there we go all right so let's click on this guy all right cool so the facing ratio we have right now is the blacks is a little too close so what's happening is when i click on this guy um i got too much going on so i can try to bring in the gain a little bit make it a little tighter and you'll notice that now the outline is really strong here and the black is uh, taking over. So what I want to do is just invert it. Now I'm going to have this and you're going to notice that the black outline is all around and uh, and you kind of get like a cartoon shader. Now the background's not really helping the scenario here. So let's grab this uh, dome. I'm going to delete it and just create a regular Arnold light area light. This is just going to fill it. Oops, not area light. Sorry. Arnold light uh, sky dome. This is just going to fill it with a regular white light, which is going to potentially blow out my scene, but at least you'll be able to see that outline. So I'm going to reduce my intensity. And if I zoom in into, into here, you'll notice that she's got a cool black outline around her body. Whoop. There it is. And if I rotate the character, that outline remains, which is pretty interesting looking style. Now you're not limited. You can always change the color to blue if you want to. Or if you wanted to do more a different type of style, you can always do white. But uh, it just gives you an effect, kind of like a tune shading look, which is pretty interesting view. All right, so now that we have this mix shader, you would basically have to do it for every single piece. So any type of shader that you have that's influencing this, you would attach an AI mix shader to it and it will do its magic. So uh, that was just a quick uh, tutorial on how to use AI facing ratio. You can do a lot of really great things. You can thin out the lines if you want to. So it's not so thick. You can soften it if you want to give it like an interesting kind of like sh shade. Uh, you can make it wider. There's really a lot of things you can mess around with this and have some fun with. So let me know if you guys have any questions. And just for fun, I'm going to tear this off here. And click this. So she's got kind of like this cool tune shading. Let's see what happens if we go to our render settings, go to our Ar Arnold and just kind of drop this to a negative one, which is going to turn it into pixel art. And then I'm going to drop it to negative two. And you'll notice that she's now becoming kind of like a, uh, a outlined pixel art. If I keep dropping it even further, she becomes even more pixelated. So this is like a really low eight bit. So again, there's a lot of really crazy things you guys can do with this. It's kind of fun if you are interested in kind of creating abstract pieces. So, all right. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. We went over a few things, but I really wanted to go over the AI facing ratio node by Arnold. Don't forget to uh, like if you found this interesting Don't for and click on that little bell and uh, just uh, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out academicphoenixplus.com where you can download this model and follow along. So thank you everybody for listening. I really appreciate your support and I will see you next time.